Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we've been talking this week about a great book that I've been reading called The River of the Lord, A Path Through Suffering by Tim McAlpin. Is an author named Timothy McAlpin, M little C A L P I N. And really want to encourage you if uh, you're in a season of discouragement or been going through a lot of suffering to pick up a copy of this. It's really, really blessed me. It's encouraged me. It's challenged me. And I think you'd be really blessed by it. Uh, you can find out more about his book and more about Tim himself if you go to his website, the river of the lord.com that's the river of the lord.com and you know everybody's got a story and that's one of the reasons i love doing hope is here is letting other people tell their stories and we've told bits and pieces of uh tim's story about suffering losing his dad at the age of 12 and his uh, son 10 years ago this past christmas eve and uh new year's eve new year's eve i'm sorry new year's eve and uh so he he knows about suffering so he does speak from experience but um you know it talks about in revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and tim talks about this in his book that we overcome satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and uh, that all starts with a foundation doesn't it tim exactly uh you know people as i tell the story and they've asked me about the book uh, they say well you know how did you come to have this kind of faith and how did you come to hear from God like you hear from God well first off you know and they want to know if I hear from God audibly and I say no I don't hear from God audibly I hear from him much louder <laughs> than what it would be if it was audibly but um, you know you have to have a foundation to be able to um, navigate through the storms of life or your boat will sink if you don't know how to sail and so um, that's basically what this book is is to sh tell people how I learned to sail on the rough seas of life basically if you will and um, so I like to say that early on in life I was so fortunate that I had a, a grandfather that was a 1928 Baptist uh, seminary graduate from Louisville, Kentucky. And he used to tell me stories of Daniel in the lion's den and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and the, and the uh, fiery furnace and, uh, and Joseph being sold into slavery. And, and I, I say, you know, when they brought me the news that Jay was killed, I, the first image in my mind was the image of my grandfather uh, teaching me about God and his faithfulness and so I was so fortunate to have had that background and that foundation I wonder about people that go through the things that I went through uh, and don't have a foundation in God I don't know how in the world they would make it because as soon as this happened uh, God was right there with me and sustaining me and showing me things and letting me know how much he loved me and that he was going to be with me and you know you have to have you know jesus used to say you know you've got ears to hear you got to have eyes to see well you've got to have ears to hear and you've got to have he's jesus would say let those who have ears let them hear and let those who have eyes let them see well you've got to have eyes and ears sensitive to the leading of the holy spirit and so um, you know, my grandfather uh, taught us the scripture verse, me and all my cousins, about Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and on the third day arose again according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, 3rd and 4th verses. Well, that became a, uh, a constant in my life. And as I got older and I would go to family functions, my grandfather, we called him Daddy Mac, he would say, Timmy, come up and say the gospel. And I would. And even when I got older and I brought girlfriends to the family functions, he would ask me to do it. And I'd cringe, but I'd get up and I would do it, you know, because I wanted to, I wouldn't want to disappoint Daddy Mac. So when my father was killed, I was age 12. He was missing in the mountains of West Virginia for a week before they found him. He was in his private plane. And, uh, you know, as a young boy, 12, uh, the drama of the in, that ensuing week, and then ultimately when we went to the uh, cemetery. And there in the middle of all of that 
uh, chaos and confusion of a young 12-year-old boy, uh, I saw something I knew, something familiar. And there on the stone that said the name McAlpin were also these words, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried and on the third day rose again, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, 3rd and 4th verses. And so I thought, you know, my grandfather taught that to me when I was five, and now here I am 12, and there it is again. And so life went on after that. And, um, and you know, I can remember a um, test that I would have. You know, one time I worked for several years to accomplish a goal, and that goal didn't turn out, and I got down on God. And uh, I never will forget it, I, you know, like so many people that are immature in the Lord and inexperienced and foolish, you know, lashed out at God because something didn't go my way. And so I was walking in my house one day and the Holy Spirit hit me about the time I hit my hand hit the doorknob and he said, he says, Tim, God has heard you and he requires you to make a decision right now. Even before you cross over the threshold of this doorway, you have to make a decision. Either God Almighty is everything he says he is, and your mind is just too small to understand the mind of Almighty God, or there's nothing to him and you just need to forget about him and go on with your life. So what is it going to be? We know, we want to know now. And I never will forget that because it, it was a, uh, a mile marker in my life that I will never forget. And I fell on my knees when I crossed that door and I said, God, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I've, I've made a mistake. I said, I've been down on you for something that I couldn't understand. And I said, I promise you that forevermore, regardless of what happens to me, I will never let circumstances dictate to me whether or not you're faithful. I am going to say in my heart and soul that you're faithful and that you're, my opinion and my solid belief is that you're faithful and that you love me regardless of what happens in my life, regardless of the circumstances. So I made a decision at that point in time, and I probably was about, you know, 35, and uh, that regardless of what happened to me, I would never let circumstances dictate whether or not God was faithful. So now, fast forward in time, I'm 52 years old, and my son, who worked with me every day, my very dearest friend, uh, I said, Jay, we need to do something for God. This was in the latter part of 2008. I said, Daddy Mac gave his whole life for God. We can't just be in the pursuit of making money and never doing anything for God. So look, we got to do something for God. So we thought about it, and we came up with billboards to put all through out. Lexington, and they were up during the latter part of 2008 with that scripture verse, 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 3rd and 4th verse. It had a big gold cross on it. We got so much positive feedback on that, and Jay and I would go and at night and drive around and look at the different billboards and talk about if we thought Daddy Mac knew what we were doing, you know. What do you think Daddy Mac would think about this? He told us the gospel when I was five, and here I am, 52, and look, we're doing, I'm saying, Daddy Mac, we're putting up billboards with that scripture. I want you to know, you know, that that changed my life and it stuck with me. And we wanted to honor God through those billboards. And so the night that Jay was killed, those billboards were up all over Lexington. And so I think about the uh, constant uh, in my life of that scripture verse. And then this awful thing that had happened with Jay. And now, you know, I'm thinking, how am I going to overcome this? And I remember telling God I wasn't going to let ever let circumstances dictate. And so here I am looking square in the eyes of the worst circumstances in the world and thinking, okay, Tim, you know, you still love God. You still believe in God. Are you going to let this circumstance dictate? Is God faithful now? You know, and even Satan was kind of edging me. Now what do you think, big boy? 
You know, I say this, Greg. It sure is easy to call God faithful when we're going down the lake in a boat on a sunny day with a glass of iced tea in our hand, isn't it? That doesn't take anything. You can line up a thousand people and all thousand of them can tell you how good God is on a day like that, can't you? But in your white hot heat, in your darkest hour, when you're just completely, you've been ripped to pieces and had so many plans for Jay and uh, he was such an integral part of our business and so, and here, you know, he was my only son too. I've got a grandson, Cameron, now that's 15, and he sure is helping me and filling those big shoes of his daddy's. But So I say this. We've got to learn to call God faithful at the caskets of our children. Mm. We've got to learn to call God faithful when we're at the bed of a dying loved one and we know that they're going to die. We've got to learn to call God faithful during those times and say, don't we love him? Isn't he faithful? You know, I never will forget a couple of years ago, one of Jay's friends was dying of leukemia. And me and John Davis went up to the hospital to see him. And I thought, what do you say to a mother that's beside her son who's dying? You know, I didn't have any time to, to, to this kind of thing. It just, bam, it happened. So I went in and I said, hey, we've come to tell you how good God is. We've come to tell you how faithful God is. We want you to know how good God is and how faithful God is. I said, Aaron, God may save you and he might not. You may go on to be with the Lord, but I'm here to tell you that God is faithful and he's true and he loves you and he will see you through. And I got a call after he passed away and his mother called me. She says, Tim McAlpin, I never will forget the day you walked into that hospital room. She said, I was at the end of my rope. And when you left talking about how good and faithful God was, I thought I could walk on water. So that's the foundation you got to have to go through these kinds of things. Wow. Great stuff from a man that knows suffering. Tim McAlpin has been our guest this week on Hope is Here. And I've been blessed. I've been challenged. I've been encouraged by his book, The River of the Lord, A Path Through Suffering. Um, I'm not done with it yet. I'm almost at 100 pages, and uh, it's an easy read, but it's a powerful read, and he's got it divided up. It could almost be like a devotional book. Um, I'm kind of taking my time reading it because I really want to chew on some of this. Uh, he's got um, 36 different chapters in it, and some of them are just a couple pages short, so it would be a great devotional book. If you're a follower of Jesus, you want to grow in your faith, I'm telling you, this book will take you to another level. And... Uh, like we talked to one of the earlier programs, um, you know, you don't want to hear about something from somebody unless they've been through it or they've done that. Uh, if they're an expert, as the old saying goes, you, you get references. You can get somebody to do uh, major repairs on your house or you got to take your car in somewhere. You want to ask for references. Uh, well, I'm telling you, this guy's been through it and yet uh, he's walked through the fire and Yet he's trusted God, and you just heard him say, God is good. So I want to encourage you to pick up a copy of that book, The River of the Lord, A Path Through Suffering. I know I'm going to buy a few extra copies myself and start giving them to people when uh, maybe they're doubting God. And that's why we do hope is here, to give you hope, because we don't want you to lose hope and be discouraged. I also want to encourage you to check out his website, theriveroftheLord.com. That's theriveroftheLord.com. Well, I hope that you will uh, tune in and join us next week. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is here. CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com. 